Ah, microtransactions. Hate them, or hate them more. There's no loving them as their primary purpose is to tempt you into rinsing your wallet. So more than likely you're thinking, what's the problem now? What's Ubisoft done this time? It's not necessarily anything they weren't doing before, but it's a case of what it's become. And personally, I think it is something that is worth talking about. The issue is summed up by this Reddit post, and I think it sums it up quite well. Here's what it says. There are now nine armor sets in the microtransaction store, just as many as there are in the base game. Are we going to let this slide? Now, half of the armors available in the game are exclusive only to people who are willing to spend money on extremely overpriced microtransactions. Us other players, even those among us who spent over $100 on the Collector's Edition, have gotten very little content over these past few months. Like all we've really gotten is a nice but kind of lackluster event and a bunch of bug fixes. Meanwhile, Ubisoft just keeps adding and adding ridiculous shit to the microtransaction store, just milking the whales of their money with the content that only a very small percentage of players will actually get to enjoy. On top of that, it's not only cosmetic stuff, but it actually affects gameplay and in some cases is rather overpowered. And then when the rest of the player base finally did get an armor set, it was an event exclusive and was literally a reskin with some blood spatters on it. Why isn't everybody talking about this? Only a few years ago, people would have raised hell if a games company did shit like this. This is not okay, especially not for a game that costs 60 goddamn bucks. I think this Reddit post does an excellent job of explaining exactly what's wrong with the microtransaction store of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Firstly, there are simply too many gear packs that are on this Helix store. Secondly, every gear pack on this store is overpriced by a fucking ton. And to make matters worse, you can only buy Helix credits in set packs, of which none will be the same value as the items that you might be considering buying, and so you'd have to buy more Helix credits than you need. Next, Ubisoft is allocating resources to making shite that hardly any Anybody wants to have. They paid the shelf price for the game and the game still needs work, it's still quite buggy and a lot of people who bought certain special editions aren't feeling like they're necessarily getting their money's worth. In that situation nobody in their right mind would want to spend an extra $20 just to run around this game looking like Sauron. I can't imagine season pass holders are especially happy right now. I know that on it there's an extra quest available right now, though it wasn't even an especially good quest, it was just a bog standard quest, and later on there will be two major DLC expansions, but as of this very moment, compare what's available from the season pass as of right now to what's available on the Helix store. It's not a good look. But when you compare how much money it costs to buy the season pass to how much money it costs to buy these gear packs, you get a demoralising idea of how far Ubisoft thinks £30 for example should go. Some of the gear packs are valued at over half of the value of the season pass. Is that to trick consumers into thinking getting the DLC is a good deal? That remains to be seen, but the truth is you're just getting a bad deal on the Helix store. As for the Reddit post's opening claim, are there as many gear sets available on the Helix store as there are in the actual game itself? I'm not a completionist, I can't tell you for definite, but in my going 100 hour playthrough I only came across so many gear sets and it would appear as if that is probably quite an accurate statement. Whichever way you look at it, a huge and growing portion of the gear obtainable in this game is locked behind a paywall, with no viable alternative means to acquire them. Yes, you can go and do the daily contracts from Redder whenever they pop up, and slowly build up your opals to the point where you can actually buy a fucking bird. Whatever else happens to be on that week's rotation in Redder's shop, which is very limited in what it sells you at any given moment. But it will seldom give you anything useful, and it's frankly not even worth your time to do in the the first place, it's mind-numbing one objective daily quests. It's there to make the Helix store seem like the more appealing means to acquire the gear. In fact, the only cause for Reddit to exist in any extent in this game is to push the microtransaction agenda. I can't imagine Ubisoft giving another reason to throwing a 900-year-old Egyptian child in the middle of your Viking village, setting up his bookie business and his side hobby of breaking the fourth wall without paying you a single penny in tax. The prick. Before I get too sidetracked with a broader nitpick, let's bring it back to the point. These over priced microtransactions suck fundamental cock. If we added up the value of every single character gear pack and only those character gear packs, this isn't taking into account anything else that's on the store, all nine of them together are worth 13,500 Helix credits. The cheapest way to acquire that many Helix credits from zero would be to buy two packs of 6,600 Helix credits and then a pack of 500 on top. Which means to get all nine gear packs you need to spend 83 pounds and 97 pence, which is 115 US dollars and 12 cent. When you first open Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you should have 500 Helix credits to start with, but you'd still have to buy two packs of 6,600 Helix credits, which works out at £79.98. That's more money than it costs to buy the actual game. Now look at the number on screen and tell me something. If all these packs were combined into one, you'd still get the same amount of stuff, but it was 
that price tag, would you buy it? I certainly wouldn't. In fact, Ubisoft sent me plenty of Helix credits not too long ago, and the only thing I actually bought on this Helix store was the Unicorn Ship pack because I thought that was funny, but nothing on here really strikes me as even worth their money. Not that it would actually cost them any, it's a made-up digital currency that has no relevance outside of Assassin's Creed. The only reason why there's a price tag on it at all is because Ubisoft said so. If you consider the staggered release of the packs, I think Assassin's Creed Valhalla's Helix store is the perfect example of how microtransactions over time can become quite the money drain. Especially when you realise that everything we've spoken about up until now and that number before, that's only a portion of what you can buy on this store. And to me, that's an issue. It may not be anything too out there, it may not force it in your face. However, I would argue that it is subconsciously, considering it's on the pause menu at all times. But I think the fact that it exists at all is very telling of Ubisoft's attitude towards this franchise and their consumers. I'm sure plenty of developers care, but from a corporate perspective, this game is a cash cow. And we, as consumers, well, we're suckers. We already paid for the game. Lots of us have already paid for a season pass. But the only live service that Ubisoft seems to be prioritising right now is their Helix store. I think it's a really, really bad time for this business model to be used in practice as well. Everyone's had a tough year. 2020 was awful. Global pandemic, people losing their jobs left, right and centre. For a lot of people, it has been a real struggle. And I think a multi-billion dollar company trying to sap as much money out of entertainment and escapism as possible through pushing overpriced worthless microtransactions is frankly insulting, especially when the target consumers already paid full AAA price to play the game. But worse than insulting, I think it's very dangerous. Whether they should or not, kids do play these games. Often their parents will buy stuff for them directly on their consoles. Sometimes that will automatically save their details, and so kids could just open the store and buy stuff with their parents' money, with no understanding of the real-world consequence of doing so. Often there will be no verification process to prevent this either, and a lot of parents won't necessarily understand this risk, as many people just don't play video games themselves. They don't necessarily understand how data might be processed and saved on an account. Sometimes they'll just subconsciously tick boxes that allow it to be saved. Believe me, we've all ticked boxes without knowing what they mean, Nobody reads terms and conditions, do they? Ubisoft don't target their game at children with no financial awareness, so it's not that they necessarily mean to play into that risk, but I'm sure there are people at Ubisoft who live in the real world, so when they do what they do, I think it's very telling. That's not necessarily a hill I'd want to die on, but it's a point I thought I'd get across in this video anyway. But I think Ubisoft prioritising making loads and loads of content to sell on their Helix store is a huge issue for another reason as well. It's a resources drain. That could go towards the DLC. For example, expansions. I've nothing wrong with paying extra for expansions because those are actually substantial in the content they give. And I've seen some pretty good expansions go for even less money than the gear packs go for in this game. Isn't that just absurd? Do you want to run around as a unicorn man in Assassin's Creed or do you just want to go off and play Blood and Wine? Blood and Wine's cheaper and better. Or it could go towards patching the game and making it better and making it in the long term seem like a game that people might recommend to their friends and then they'd get more sales through that. I feel like microtransactions in a game is a massive waste of resources. And I feel like that's the case in any game. Assassin's Creed Valhalla's Helix store is a big issue. A completely self-made one that seems to want to sell the most meaningless shite for the most unreasonable prices. And it doesn't inspire any confidence in Ubisoft's attitude towards making games. Hopefully this has made sense. I know this isn't the first video I've done talking about the microtransactions in this game and why I don't think they're a good thing. And God knows there's many other things that I could make content on that I'd rather make content on. But I feel like this is something that needed to be spoken about again because... Between the last video I did on this and this one, I think it's become more and more apparent that Ubisoft will try to get away with anything that they can unless we don't allow them to. I'm not the first person and I'm certain I won't be the last person to point out how ludicrous this entire thing is. And I think for this video I've said all I need to say, I don't really want to convolute the point by talking in circles more than I perhaps already have. So, let me know what you think down in the comment section, of course. Thank you all for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, that would be fantastic. And with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point, but until next time, take care and goodbye.